Hello everyone, today we are going to be covering carbon-based molecules, also known as biomolecules. By the end of today's lesson, you should be able to be familiar with the following learning targets. So we already know that carbon is one of the most common elements that is found in all living things. Um, but carbon is super important. It is considered a building or one of the building blocks of life. And it's super diverse because it um, can form up to four bonds with carbon or other atoms. So we already know that when um, atoms combine in order to form molecules and compounds, they form chemical bonds. So carbon has the ability to form up to four of these chemical bonds, and it will do so with either more carbon or other atoms. So you'll notice an example here of several different molecules um, that are formed uh, with carbon, and you'll notice that they have such diverse shapes. So the molecules and the compounds that are formed um, with carbon um, can have really diverse shapes, and this really kind of contributes to them being such important and diverse um, atoms. So um, this is a typical um, atom of carbon. Notice how it has four valence electrons, which means that it needs four more electrons in order to become complete, right? Um, so therefore it will make up to four chemical bonds. Um, now, I just want to go through a few definitions before we get um, or we dive into this topic today. And these are definition words or terms that you need to be familiar with. The first is monomer. And uh, we just if we kind of break down this word into its components, mono means one. OK, and the word mer means um, subunit or unit or component. So mono mer therefore will mean one subunit or one unit or one part. So a monomer is something that is or basically a building block or one part of a large unit. Poly, on the other hand, means many. So um, if poly means many and mer means part, then polymer means uh, literally tr gets translated to many parts. So basically a polymer is a large molecule that is made up of many parts or many monomers combined together. So here is a visual that might help clarify things for you. Notice how the polymer, many, is made up of many small parts. And each one of these parts is known as a monomer. So monomer is a building block. Polymer is the whole molecule that is made up of many parts. Now, there are four types of carbon-based molecules that you need to be familiar with, and these are the biomolecules or carbon-based molecules that are found in living things. Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And all of these carbon-based molecules or biomolecules are super important because they build our bodies. They build the bodies of living things. They build our bones, they build our muscles, skin, etc. And without them, we would be malnourished. Without them, we would be um, not able to survive, not able to, to grow and develop. Um, so you'll notice that a lot of these uh, carbon-based molecules or biomolecules we get from the food that we eat. Okay, They are nutrients that we get through the, the diverse diet that we feed on. The first are carbohydrates, and the monomer of carbohydrates is a monosaccharide. And for each one of these carbon-based molecules, you need to be familiar with the structure of that carbon-based molecule. How does it look like? Its function, what does it do? And one or two examples, okay? So when you're kind of going through these carbon-based molecules and taking notes, I want you to pay extra attention to the structure of that carbon-based molecule its function, its job, and finally, one or two examples in the, in the body. So the monomer, like we said, of a, um, of a carbohydrate, or in other words, the building block, the smallest unit of a carbohydrate is known as a monosaccharide. And once again, we see that word mono, or the prefix mono. And again, mono means one. Saccharide means sugar. So monosaccharide literally is translated to one sugar or a single sugar, which makes sense, right? Because this is the smallest part of a carbohydrate. It is a single sugar. 
Now, a bunch of these sugars will come together in order to form a polysaccharide. And again, we know that poly means many. So polysaccharide is a chain, a chain of simple sugars. The elements that make up this, um, this, this biomolecule, which is a carbohydrate, the three elements that make it up or that are found in this, uh, in this um, uh, carbohydrate um, compound or molecule are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So these are the building blocks of, um, of this molecule. Now, what is the function of carbohydrates um, in our bodies? So carbohydrates, when we consume them, they essentially are our main source of immediate, fast energy. So when we consume carbohydrates, because they are basically loaded with sugars, they give our body fast energy, but short-lived. So when you, are, when you eat a lot of carbs or a lot of sugars, what usually happens? People tell you, you're going to crash, right? So you have all of this boost of energy, but unfortunately, this boost of energy is not sustainable, which means that it will, um, it will not last very long. Your, your body will burn through it. So um, depending on the type of sugar you are consuming, simple sugars will give you really fast energy and they will, your body will kind of consume them super fast. So simple sugars are usually like the unhealthy sugars such as sucrose and fructose. Um, uh, complex sugars on the other hand are slow energy sugars. So they do give you uh, a, 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 like a boost of um, short-lived energy, but they last a lot longer. They're able to give you energy for a bit longer in terms of like the time frame. Um, your body does not burn through these complex sugars as fast. So complex sugars are more healthier sugars. So think of uh, starches and, um, you know, certain types of uh, sugars that are found in potatoes, starch, uh, starch-based um, carbohydrates, and also grains and such. Um, some examples, as you can see here, so simple sugars is glucose, sucrose, and lactose. Lactose is a type of sugar that is found in milk and dairy products, and that's why some people are known as being lactose intolerant, which means that their body cannot break this specific type of sugar. And they have certain um, negative side effects um, when they consume lactose. Sucrose and glucose are the, you know, the typical sugars that you would find in things like fruits or um, candy or even um, table sugar. Then we have complex sugars, uh, polysaccharides, which I mentioned are things like starch found in potatoes and rice, um, cellulose, which is found in vegetables. So whenever you're eating a leafy green, such as lettuce, kale, um, celery, all of these things are going to contain cellulose. And finally, glyco glycogen, which is a type of carbohydrate that is found in animal products or in animal meat, specifically in the liver. If you're someone that loves eating liver, um, I find it super nasty, but there's people out there who eat liver um, that you're basically consuming high amounts of glycogen and eating, consuming liver, eating liver is super healthy actually, because it provides the body with high amounts of this um, essential carbohydrate, which is known as glycogen. Okay, so the next um, carbon-based molecule or biomolecule we wanted to talk about is our lipids. Okay, so lipids, again, we're going to look at their structure first. The smallest building block of a lipid is, some, is a, a, spe a special molecule or a special, um, yes, I guess it's a molecule, known as a fatty acid. Okay, um, so basically a fatty acid is a you don't really need to know details around what is a fatty acid but it's just a building block of lipids and the polymer is the entire lipid molecule okay so here you'll notice that we have um, a lipid molecule and notice how it's made up from small parts known as fatty acids and this other molecule called glycerol which you don't really need to be too worried about knowing you know what it is um, but the main point is that Lipid is the main polymer, and the small building blocks that make it up are the fatty acids. The elements that are involved here are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Um, and the main function of lipids is energy storage. So it does not provide your body with fast energy. It provides your body with energy that is, can be stored so that your body can use it for a longer period of time. It's also involved in insulation, which means that it covers and coats your organs so that they don't get damaged um, and provides, you know, heat. It gives our body uh, a little bit of heat. 
Um, that's why polar bears have high amounts of lipids or blubber. It's called, it's a type of fat that is found underneath their fur. And that's why polar bears are able to live in such extremely cool temperatures because they have so many, so much lipids that it provides a sort of insulation from the cold. Um, lipids also play a crucial, very important role in the cell membrane. Okay, so they form the cell membrane. Um, and if you remember, it's a type of organelle that is found in our cells. And they make certain parts of the cells waterproof. Finally, um, there are these chemicals known as hormones, which we we know what those are, right? They they uh, play a big role in growth, in development, in puberty, and uh, controlling you know the way we look like, etc. So these hormones are types of lipids. In other words, they are non-polar. They will not dissolve in your blood, and that actually makes a lot of sense because hormones are produced in certain parts of your body, and they must be carried to other parts to cause these changes that we see during puberty or during development, et cetera. It's all of these changes are caused by hormones. So you don't want the hormones to dissolve in your blood. You don't want the hormones to dissolve in water. You want them to be carried from one place to another. And for this reason, hormones are actually fats or lipids and they are nonpolar. And you know we already know that nonpolar and polar molecules do not mix, do not dissolve. And that makes a lot of sense, right? For their purpose in the body. Um, examples are phospholipids. These are special kinds of lipids found in the cell membrane. Wax and steroids. Steroids are also types of hormones and they can cause things like um, muscle growth and just you know increase in size in general. And that's why certain people might take steroids, steroid injections to kind of help them develop bigger muscles but those come with their own side effects, which um, you know we'll talk more about later. Now, there are two types of um, lipids or fats. The first is our saturated fats, and these fats are usually going to be um, the unhealthy fats. And we can tell if a fat is saturated if it remains solid at room temperature. On the other hand, Unsaturated fats are the fats that are usually liquid at room temperature, and these are going to be the healthier, okay, the healthier types of um, fats, okay? So you, you can see here that um, saturated fats are unhealthy in large amounts, while saturate, sorry, saturated fats are unhealthy in large amounts, while unsaturated fats are usually the healthier option. So unsaturated fats are things like olive oil, avocado oil, etc., while saturated fats are things like butter, um, ghee, okay, animal fat, basically. All right, um, so the last, uh, the last, is this the last? No, not the last. Okay, so uh, next we have proteins, which are considered the most diverse group of biomolecules or carbon-based molecules. And the reason why they are so diverse is because they have so many different structures and in general, when something looks a certain way or when we have a large diversity in the structure of something, it means that it will have more functions in the body because structure and function are very closely related. Structure influences function. The way something looks like influences its job or its function in the body. So this is the basic kind of like a structure of a protein. Um, it is made up of three parts, uh, hydrogen, this group or this, um, this, this part known as a carboxyl group, which again, you don't need to know any details about these, um, these types of molecules. You're going to learn more about them next year in chemistry. So we have a hydrogen, a carboxyl group, and then this part known as an amino group. And then finally, there's this R group that you see at the bottom here. And this R group is going to be, is going to lead to the diversity of proteins because this can be anything, okay? It's like a variable in math. You can replace it with any number or you can replace it with any um, molecule uh, and therefore you can end up with a, a large variety of these proteins, okay? In other words, the, the, every single protein will have these exact parts, but the R group might be different and that's why they have so many structures and functions. The building block of a uh, protein are amino acids, and there are 20 different amino acid 
12 of these amino acids are made naturally by your body, while the rest you have to get from the food that you eat. So that's why it's very important to have a diverse, healthy diet so that you can get some of these um, you know, amino acids and these types of nutrients that your body needs and cannot make itself. These amino acids will combine and they will form the, the protein. So the polymer in this example or for this particular biomolecule is the protein itself. And then, as you can see, that the elements involved here are carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and now we have the addition of a new um, uh, atom, which is nitrogen. The function of proteins is, like we said, they have such a diverse um, role in our body. They do so many different things. This is just a small part of the list. The list can go on, okay? If I had to write all the functions, I wouldn't be able to fit it on this slide. So they basically control the rate of reactions. Um, they are enzymes. So Enzymes, all enzymes are going to be proteins, okay? And they basically make reactions happen faster in the body. They regulate cell processes. So whenever a reaction is happening, this is regulated by the, uh, by the action of proteins. They form our bones and muscles. They move things around the cell, and they help us fight diseases. The antibodies that are now super popular, and you're hearing about them all over the news, Basically, it's your way, the, the way of your immune system remembering certain um, diseases such as um, or, or viruses and bacteria. So, for example, if someone um, is exposed to COVID, the virus COVID-19, their body will, will, will fight it by forming these antibodies. And essentially, the antibodies will recognize the virus and they will cause an immune response. We're going to talk more about antibodies later when we discuss the immune system, but for now, just know that proteins are involved in fighting and are helping our body fight diseases. And here you can see several examples, and there are so many more. Like I said, proteins are so diverse. But just some really quick examples. We have insulin, which is found in our blood, and it helps us break down sugar. People who are diabetic, their body does not produce insulin, and they have to take insulin shots, right? So insulin is super important. It breaks down sugar. Keratin, it builds our hair. It builds our nails. Um, melanin, it determines our skin tone or skin color. And then we have different other enzymes, as you can see, such as pepsin, which is found in our stomach and it breaks down food. Hemoglobin, which is a type of protein that is found in the red blood cells and it helps us carry oxygen around. Finally, we have nucleic acids. This is the last biomolecule or carbon-based molecule we are discussing today. The building block or the smallest part of a nucleic acid is something known as a nucleotide. It's a type of molecule called a nucleotide. And these nucleotides combine in order to form either DNA or RNA. DNA and RNA are two types of nucleic acids. The main job of nucleic acids is to store and move or store and transmit genetic information. So DNA is passed from one parent to the child and from the child to its child and so on. So DNA and it's kind of like cousin RNA. DNA and RNA are super related. They're not like identical, but they are very closely related. So both of these molecules, both of these nucleic acids, their main role is to pass on genetic information from parent to child. And we're going to talk more about DNA and RNA later when we learn about genetics. But for now, we need to just be familiar with the monomer and the polymer and basically its main job in the body. Okay, so here's a quick visual recap of everything that we've talked about today. Um, but other, th other than that, uh, that is it for today's lesson.